Welcome to the Down the Road Show podcast. This is Cannabis Conversations with Casey, a brand new series where I'm diving deep into my new friends from Clubhouse and bringing uh, faces that I love to cannabis and and talking about it with these wonderful people. Our show is sponsored by my friend Dark Knight Studios, who made all my wonderful logos and has his own t-shirt company that makes these wonderful podcast t-shirts for me. Thank you very much, Bat. And also our new sponsor, which is me, basically, Pastor Wellness, my new health and wellness coaching subscription that comes with the free holy oil and heavenly tea, which I am sipping on my own heavenly tea today to keep me as pain-free as possible to do this wonderful interview with Gil. Let's bring in Gil. How's Israel, Gil? Oh, Israel's wonderful. It's a wonderful evening today. The storm's done and over. We're finally back with electricity over here. Back from <laughs> the dark ages yesterday. And exactly. uh, glad to be here. Yeah, for those that don't know, we were supposed to do this interview yesterday, but uh, unfortunately, the storm in the Atlantic knocked out all of Gil's power, and uh, so we moved it to today. So it's, it's sunny and shiny, and we get to see your beautiful face, Gil, and all that amazing product, Cannabis, behind you, which looks gorgeous. That's a gorgeous setup. Uh, I can't wait to talk about Cannabis. But before we get into Cannabis, let's give people a quick backstory on you and how you got to this point. Yeah, well, it all started when I was, well, look at me, I'm a skinny, nice guy now, but uh, back in 1999, I uh, weighed 99 kilos at my, at, at the most of my weight, and I was a soldier, and um, at some point, I got Crohn's disease, and for those of you who don't know what Crohn's disease is, it's an intestinal uh, disease that basically what happened to me was that I lost blood into my intestines, and basically fainted and and woke up at a military hospital and they tried to diagnose and do everything to me gave me every prescription drug available and nothing helped i lost 37 kilos that's about 70 pounds in just under three months and uh nothing helped and one of these doctors who was actually a reserves army doctor uh took a huge risk of 20 years imprisonment which i had no idea at the time we thank him. Five roll joints. Yeah, we thank him. And yeah, we thank him. He he's my idol forever. Like he saved my life and changed the course of my life forever. Gave me five roll joints and told me try this; it might work. Now a joint and a half into it, I was high. Now I I don't know about you guys that say that you didn't get high the first time you smoke. You didn't smoke the right thing, or you didn't smoke. It. I was high. And I got to the point that I was at the munchies. No, no, and no, no, it was no. 5 30 p.m. And and you know, the army rules are very strict. You know, you don't get dinner until six. We don't care who you are. And so it's 5:30. I'm knocking on the doors of you know the mess hall and everything. And they gave me like a loaf of bread and a chocolate spread and told me this should do for like a troop of 30 people for half an hour until food. Well, a loaf of bread and a chocolate spread later and 30 minutes in, I knocked on the door again, like it's six o'clock and me and I want food. And and I ate and ate. And then after the food was done, I, I went to my doctor and told him what happened. And he goes like, oh my God, you should smoke some more. And I'm like, why? I smoke some more. So I did. And uh, <laughs> long story short, he fed me five roll joints three times a day for the next 10 days until I went home for the first time. And then I went for the weekend home and I went to the doctor, to my GP, and told him about it, obviously, because I didn't know any better. And he goes like, well, cannabis is illegal. Back then he said marijuana is illegal. But um, I'm not opposing it if it helps you. So Monday came back and, and I came back to the army base to the, you know, to the hospital and, and I told my doctor that I told my GP and that he doesn't oppose it and he turned like two shades paler than the white wall behind him that was just repainted, <laughs> picked me up in the air about a foot off the ground because he's a huge guy 
and screamed into my face, I'm trying to save your life. Why are you trying to destroy mine? And only then did it hit me how like, what a huge risk he took and, and how we came to this. And, and this got me started on activism because I couldn't face the fact that this is my medicine, yet it's illegal and he could face 20 years of, of jail time. If it is ever known that it's him who presented it to me in the army. And, and you've and helped, so, and, you, and, and because of that activism, now you've helped change all kinds of laws in, in Europe besides just uh, your own country of Israel. Uh, and so here we are. Yeah, well, from that moving on forward, I did a lot of research, education, uh, worked with the government. Uh, you know, I started the Israel Medical Cannabis Association and promoted it until we had 25,000 members. Right now, it's over 108,000 patients in Israel, active licensed members. And wow, you know, it's booming. But through all of this, I had my own personal experience with cannabis, which was very wide. And as somebody who taught people, and I had like 5,000 firsthand experiences with educating, you know, real firsthand ed education of patients and their families. And this got me to an understanding that it's very personalized medicine. I mean, the same strain could impact two different people differently. And, and, and not just because of what illnesses they have but you know everybody's endocannabinoid system is a bit different we all have some different endocannabinoid deficiencies and and with this perspective i went and i understood that i'm more confused than ever because i thought i understand it by now and hell no and <laughs> that's that's how the last that's how the last year has been for me i'm like oh i i know so much about cannabis and then all of you guys just <sighs> It, it, listen, we're at the infancy stages of this, you know, era of cannabis, because cannabis was known to man for ages, but we lost all of this knowledge that we had because of prohibition for 100 years. And now that it's done 70 years or whatnot, you know, almost 100 years prohibition. And by the time it will be completely done, we will have to relearn everything. And that's kind of the law of maintenance of stupidity, you know, where everybody has to do the same mistake again. And I prefer otherwise. So I did some research. And coming to realize the main differences of, of impact on people were not just related to the cannabinoids, but also to the terpenes within uh. the plant. It's all about the Terps, baby. Yeah, and that got me to become some sort of, a, a, let's call it enthusiast at the beginning, and then more of a, a worshiper <laughs> later on. Um, and, and, you know, I, I came back to Professor Meshulam and Professor Lumia Harnish, who I had the privilege of access to because I've been working alongside them for so long with the association. And I kind of ran this idea through them that, you know, Turks may be a major player, much more than we understand in the entourage effect of cannabis. And obviously, Professor Mishulam had the notion of, yes, terpenes do have an impact. But Professor Lumi Ohanush was the one who showed me the analysis of different strains or the same strains from different farms having the different terpenes profiles and then different responses reported from patients. And this got us going for a while. And then during one of those meetings, Professor Mishulam goes in the room and, and says, oh, Gili, you're the Terp guy. You, you'll love this thing I have here. And I'm like, what? And you can quote me on this one, by the way. I'm like, yes, what's up? And <laughs> He said, I have this patient, she's a 32 year old female mother uh, that is epileptic and she's been epileptic for the majority of her life. And she's got two young kids. And for the first time last year, she had the privilege of having self-confidence to pick them up in her hands without having fear seizures because she had multiple seizures per day for her entire life. And for, you know, for a year now, she had about one seizure every two months. Okay. That's great news. Amazing. 
And then she was deferred from one supplier to another with the same exact uh, clone, basically, that they got from the government to, to grow with the same protocol that the government gave them. But obviously, each of them followed it a bit differently. And she got back to having seizures. And she was afraid to pick up her kids or to live because, you know, going back to six or seven seizures a day after being seizure-free for even just six months is, you know, it brings back all of the fear and all of the despair that, that came along before, but even more so because she thought she had like the solution and now she doesn't know whether she has it or not. And they an an analyzed the actual flower that she received because she had some left over from the previous supplier and the current supplier's uh, batch. Nice. And the only difference, the only difference was the terpene profile. Okay. And so the entourage, the medical entourage, is so entangled with terpenes and cannabinoids working together. And that got me to an understanding that if it's working on a medical level, so, you know, such a deep medical level, then obviously it works on a much lesser level of the perceived effect. Because we all perceive cannabis effect differently, but there is the perceived effect apart from the medicinal effect. The medicinal effect right. may impact us in ways that we don't perceive. Okay. You don't know how your pain is reduced medicinally. Your perception is a reduction of pain. Okay. Most of us as patients or users or whatever, don't really care about the medical mechanisms and the biological mechanisms of what's going on. I don't care how or but why, as long as it's getting rid of my pain. Yeah. And mostly we care about the perceived effect, like what we can actually perceive. I sleep better. I have munchies. I, you know, I have less pain. <clears throat> oh, uh, the meeting got to the time limit. You need to record again or? No, no, no. Keep going. The time limit. Okay. Just got the announcement. Um, <laughs> in any case, though. So this got me going and, and understanding that the entourage effect is much more complex than I ever imagined. And then I went to research how many terpenes there are or we know of in cannabis and what we know about them. And started mapping the them time, out. Yeah, at the time, the map included 232 terpenes and terpenoids uh, found in cannabis and hemp. And uh, by now, the, my, my research team and I have concluded a, a map of 435 terpenes and terpenoids in cannabis and hemp, which is like about doubling the map. But it's, it's so much more than that because this allows us to see the long tail end of the impacts. So we don't see just the short tail, like the major cannabinoids and how they impact the effects, but also the very minor cannabinoids that may attribute, attribute to this major sub-profile that impacts a specific effect. And then we go like, okay, but how do we figure all of this out? I mean, that's, that's huge. Without giving and away proprietary that. secrets, yes. How do you do that? No, it, it's like, it's too wide of an array. So in the end, you have to narrow it down before you widen it back out. So what we did was we found the 67 terpenes that were thoroughly researched, including their biological impacts on a separate basis like one by one, okay. eucalyptal from eucalyptus, uh, menthol from mint, uh, <laughs> you know, very simple uh, things that, that were found already in science. And then we tried to see whether we could find any symbiosis, symbiosis between those article and researchers and cannabis research that's done now. And what can we find? What kind of correlations we can find? between the strains and the profiles and what's been already known and found. Mm, okay. 
and that was the basis of kind of getting the the foundations of our uh, um roadmap let's say Turf map not even not even the roadmap this was like we had to figure out whether our idea was even feasible before we mapped it out like does it reach a road <laughs> okay <laughs> before you can make a road map is, is this a road is, is this not not this stand? <laughs> you know <laughs> validation are, are, are so we in a four-wheel off-roading somewhere or are we about to jump <laughs> on a main highway yeah exactly something like that and it, once we figured this first step out we, we kind of went and gathered a lot of feedback from users because user feedback is the most important and tried to correlate that with the chemical analysis from the plant and kind of overlap what people are saying the perceived effect is with what the chemical compound is which took years I, i'm five years into it and I feel like we're just getting started with something that can generate insights. Maybe, maybe <laughs> like, you know, the first step of insights. Yeah. Um, well, all the clubhouse rooms are always talking about terps and the entourage effect. And for those who don't know and are not familiar with terpenes and cannabis, the uh, and uh, cannabinoids, the entourage effect is how the different cannabinoids and terpenes interact with each other to make you feel. Yeah, and, and more so, it's how the cannabinoids are interacting with each other and how the terpenes are interacting with each other and then how they interact with one another. Add to this the flavonoids and some other compounds that we don't even follow yet because we're trying to map what we know. There's so much we don't even know yet. I mean, 10 years from now, looking back at this conversation, I will think, oh, damn, it was such an early time. I was... I was so ignorant about the world and, and now I feel like I know already something that I have, you know, some insights to share. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the things you know now about all the terps and everything compared to what you're going to know in 10 years from now, I can't wait to find out. I hope I'm still here to find out. But so that's what Cannabis is, is it's a terpene product, not actual cannabis for those who are wondering. Oh, yeah. Coming to my brand and my product. Uh, thing was, terpenes are so important. I, I almost forget about my products. Um, <laughs> I won't. That's why we're here, and it's right behind you, buddy. No, no, no. no, that's okay. Now, the research is going in a way that we're trying to validate everything we know with actual feedback from the market. So we had to come out with products that we can present to the market for testing because, you know, we have these thesis and without validation it's worthless and so the first product i i thought of and and that was a, it's a long sidetrack story all on its own so i won't go there but let's say that was the night a white night within i i thought of it and then wrote the patent and then started researching it was the turpin infused rolling papers these babies over here my first product because I thought, how do I, you know, introduce this entourage effect to people? Because, you know, if, if you're told that it's terpenes, you're told it's terpenes, but you don't really get the difference of how these terpenes affect you differently than those. It's like the whole strain is different. It's not just the terps. So, and, and, and sometimes the cannabis you get, the terpenes depend on who it was that grew it and where, too. So, like, that, that's not even 100% accurate from grower to grower. Yes, but even if you got, like, something you love, okay, and then you took some, the same grower's uh, other strain, which has different terp profile, obviously, it's not just the terp profile is different. The cannabinoid profile is different as well so you're getting a whole different product you don't really feel at the tip of your fingers the difference of what really terpenes bring to the table and so i made these terpene infused papers with 40 microliters of terpene of dose accurate dose of terpenes in each paper 
and started uh, testing the market with those. Um, <laughs> and and the more feedback we got, the the more sure we knew that we were on the right track, and and we, the the more certain we were that that this is the thing to do. Right, and and and, then, and so to play devil's advocate for all the for anyone watching the video podcast right now that are old school stoners like myself, how do those papers actually smoke? Uh, because they look oily, they look kind of funky by the eyes. Uh, I haven't got mine in my hands yet to ch check out myself. So you know, go I'm ahead. And... If you want, I can roll it and show you. But basically, I know you can um, roll and talk at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that that's easy thing is um these smoke very smooth they're they're king size papers so that's 10.8 centimeters 108 millimeters long by 54 millimeters wide that they're very extra wide they're they're for missiles okay <laughs> because you know, I really wanted the surface area to infuse and to get the even dose around so that people can really enjoy it. Mm. And you can cut it, to, even though it's a waste of, of good terps, you can cut it to size if you want. I'll never, never do that, but I, I've seen people do that and I don't take offense. Um, no personal offense. Now, when I roll in it and smoke it, it's not just an even burn, it's a slow even burn. And even though it looks oily and feels oily on the fingers, a bit oily, so it's a bit messy to uh, roll with it. Like if you grind too thin, you will feel like you're rolling with pieces of, you know, sand on your paper. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like rolling at the beach. Okay. That's the, the 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 sensation of you know uh, of the, uh, the paper. Uh, right. Okay. So it's gonna feel a little off to most. of I don't care how it feels, as long as it's you said it has a slow burn. As long as it smokes However, good, even it gives me that entourage. Oily, you can see it's sturdy. Very sturdy. It's not like it's falling apart or anything. It's very easy to use. Uh, and the only thing I've heard from many various users, regardless of the strain or matching flavor that we put into it, is that it's got a very, very strong taste when you lick the glue. So we made new glue that has better flavor, but we didn't get to the mass that is you know worth for our paper producer to put our glue on it we're still working our way to it but we solved the problem by now um, the next product we came out with was something that the market demanded actually which was pre-rolled cones with the same product because all commercial producers wanted to put you know weed and hemp in pre-rolls that are infused right and and you know some some people just don't like rolling their own joints i don't get that i like playing with my weed yeah but there are, yeah, let's put it this way there are as the um advertisement of of med men went which you know they had the the best i think commercials advertisements when they went out like the no stoner ad campaign was amazing. So as you can see there, there are many different types of no stoner users. And there are stoners who like rolling, but there are various people and various types that don't really like the mess of handling it and whatnot. And they prefer either to buy the pre-rolled pre -rolled, or to buy the cone in a way that they can actually take the cone out like this and fill it and 
I, it's such a shame that technology is not yet at a stage that I can do. And like I can't smell that, that too. Smell <laughs> <laughs> He's sniffing it on camera for those in the audio. Oh my good God. Yeah. I wish, I wish I could That's, smell that. I can't wait to get it so I can smell it. But, but you're right though, too, because of the pre, uh, the cones. Cause like my, the arthritis, my hands have been so bad this week. Like I can barely get this up and going and the editing is difficult and because my hands aren't working. So I, I will probably eventually be at a stage where I can no longer roll my own. And so have, being able to just load it into the pre-cones and twist it and light it up is good to go. Yeah. Even if it's just the first in the morning when you're still stiff and it relaxes you enough to go for the second one and really roll it for yourself. It's, you know, it's, it's a good solution for people that really don't have the ability. And as I come from the medical market and there was a great, demand in the within the medical market both from producers and the audience that's where we headed and that's the second product we came up with but then because we were so focused on the technology i was focused on expanding the the you know the reach of the technology and allowing as many users to really have the first hand experience yeah, especially so for for new time users who don't know or don't want to smoke a joint and want to try things a different way. You've got all kinds of amazing, cool little gifts and products yeah, behind you there. In a second, all I'm saying is that for this to happen, we had to develop a production line to produce it from scratch. And so I thought, well, I'm a small time producer from Israel. I'd rather license it to the big boys out in the States, which was what we were doing just before COVID. And then COVID hit and we had to start producing ourselves and going out with the brand. And, and you know, I'm blessed for the opportunities that I got from this because now I had to pivot into the actual building of a brand and selling my own product and realizing that there's so much more width that I could go and so much more depth I could go into because we mapped out not just the three flavors we came out with initially, which were the Jack Herrera matching or Jack Herrera based um, uplifting profile or the Clementine based joyful profile or the Skittles based uh, relaxing profile. All sound amazing. Apart from, apart from those three, we figured out there are 31 effects in cannabis that we can manipulate with terpene profiles. And for each of those effects, we have several sub-profiles that are impacting those effects. So if you want like a low range impact or a high range impact, those are two different separate profiles that you can layer on top of one another that create that. Okay. And so we have so much and, and such a way to go. And then we thought, how can we introduce, you know, that's a width that's very problematic with production. Right. You know, when you're going into the ins and outs of logistics, that's harsh. And so we got to the point of saying, okay, let's, let's develop the product that we can test the market with on a smaller scale and then expand fast and not use our own produced, you know, machinery to produce the product, but just the chemistry behind it. And then we came out to the world with two fresh new products that I have over here. One of them is this tiny, tiny spray that was made for me, for my own personal preference because as a bong user, what I do is I take the bowl mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I spray inside the bowl. And then I roll my ground cannabis a bit with this spray of terps. Then please do excuse me because I'm going to fill a fresh bowl. And uh, Excuse, this is called Cannabis Conversations with Casey. One of one of the two of us needs to be smoking since I'm out. We should have done ASM. You know what? We'll do Cannabis ASMR on the next show. That's like a whole show of ASMR with my things. That's and the roll on and the come on. The 
with the glass tapping. I do love me some ASMR. Oh, yeah. Like there's some great ASMR people out there. It's it's fun. For those of you who don't know, uh, that's extreme intense sound. Uh, and uh, the better your earbuds, the better the sound. That was a good, that was a good bomb rip right there. So like, you know, for those watching this who are like, ooh, and cannabis curious, this is medicine. This isn't just about getting high. This is medicine for him. And the entourage effect helps with overall pain relief, which is where cannabis helps so much because you can take swag or mid grades or dirt weed or stuff that's not as good. And when you add your cannabis to it, like you just did, now you're getting more of an entourage effect and you're actually improving your weed. Yes. Thing is like this. When your weed is like at its best, at its purest, at its finest, when it's just been cut and, and dried and cured to the most potency, it's already at like 90% of the maximum terpene potency it can be in. It's already lost a bit. But that's the best. That's when it's indoor grown at your own home with your personal TLC, tender love and care, and preferably your spouse or mother overlooking you because us men tend to forget things. Um, <laughs> I forget things without it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, your cannabis is important. So yeah. Helps keep me now, out of the chair. Exactly. Now, when I'm uh, when I'm buying cannabis, like I am from the pharmacy, okay, this nice packaged cannabis from the pharmacy already has like uh, only eighty percent or less of terps, and in Israel, only about sixty percent of terp content that was supposedly in it, because it goes through radiation for disinfection before it reaches the consumer, which kind of takes care of a lot of the terpene profile and, and destroys it. And so in Israel, it's kind of a must. And that's what got me going on to the product. Now, from those 31 effects, as I said, we came out and launched only three, but we have focus groups with the rest of the 28 effects as, as we speak. And uh, we will be uh, kind of doing uh, um, market testing on a wider array and, and letting people decide which products they want to keep in the market. But that was the spray, and that's for me as a bong user. But <laughs> I like the smile, Casey. If it, for those on the audio right now, I'm pointing at myself because I'm a test subject. Yep, test subject. And the next thing we came out with was something for the pocket more than for the effect because it's the same effect as everything else, okay? Um, we thought, well, because the papers are kind of expensive to produce, I mean, they are a very good product. You can control the dose and we can also kind of, well, not kind of, I can say that out loud now that the patent is all, yeah. The patent office replied to me that they're going to accept my patent application. Finally. Fuck yeah, last time we talked, you were waiting to hear back, hell yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the document. They replied the mail, at least that's, you know, like accepted, we accept the changes, we're working on it, but it was their requested changes, so. Right, right, right. But at um, least you know that's moving forward, that's awesome. Oh yeah, and we can infuse not only terpenes, but terpenes and cannabinoids into papers and paper products. Woohoo! And control those. And, um, you know, that's amazing. That's, but that's fucking awesome. Uh, I'll take your amazing and fucking awesome. But that's, yeah. <laughs> but that was for the papers. And then we thought, well, the market deserves the terps in a much easier, faster way than, you know, just the papers and, and much more affordable. So we came out with this extremely tiny baby look at it compared to my fingers if you can even focus on it i'll try and pull it back a little more a little more a little more <laughs> right there right there oh. there we go 
<laughs> That's a tiny roll on. And what we do with this is basically if we had a paper that was not cannabis, we could either roll on the paper and make it a cannabis or take a pre roll joint and just apply directly before, yeah, just before we use it and roll just, on top of it and yeah, roll the uh, roll the outside of it and to add a little extra boost. The world's smallest deodorant. Would that work? Uh, but it might. I bet you some hippies will try that as a deodorant. I bet you. <laughs> yeah, I I, well, I don't know about that, but I know that uh, in our com campaign, by the way, we are having a social media campaign that just started the testing of all of the ads and whatnot. And those ads were approved because we do not advertise any consumption of any kind of smoking product. We advertise how not to use our product. So you'll see a nice girl using it as a uh, very, as the smallest deodorant of the world saying, this is the wrong way to use cannabis. If you want to learn how press here. Uh, that, uh, that's see, uh, that's kind of brilliant marketing. Okay, that's good. You'll see a nice girl leaving this nice fragrant paper with her phone number for a uh, waiter. Or you'll see. Uh, oh, that is the, so many. I, I, as twenty years in the restaurant industry, that is the right way to use it. If some girl left me one of those cannabis with her number, so I could take down her number and then smoke that later. Hell yeah, that's the perfect usage of your of your paper. Yeah, you see. So many, so many uses, <laughs> and we already have like user-generated content because we kind of took it to our influencers that we worked with in the past and and gave them the thought, and one of them already put it in the nose ring and did a video of her exercising because she she wrote she hates the smell, but with a cannabis nose ring, she can take it. Works better with flour. That's funny. Um, <laughs> and you know, other things. It, it's it's kind of getting the motion here in Israel and, and we're working on on moving outside of Israel and translating it to English now and you know starting and, 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 and expanding to... cannabis globally, but not just that. You have one more product, bro. One more product, sir, like that's pretty yes. pretty epic. It's pretty cool. As I said, the nose ring thing. The nose ring thing was kind of funny because that's the newest product. We don't even have it on the website yet. It's coming soon to the website this week because I don't have the product photos yet to put on. Oh, you're revealing it on Down the Road Show. And that's the product. You see this, see this little baby? Got some small holes on it from both sides. Kind of reminds me of a microphone. Ah. Like like a little lapel microphone. Yeah, but, huh. And this little baby, I can put with my entire 10 gram dose from my medical supplier, because that's how it comes. And I can either put it in the medical bag, like so, and just drop it in and leave it for three days. Or better yet, put it in a glass jar and, and seal it properly for three days. And then from three days on, it will already have changed the flavor and smell of the weed. So if you get stuck with weed that, you know, you're plug supplied, that you're kind of okay with the effect, but not really pleased with the aroma. Look, even the dispensary. I've hit a few dispensaries here, and since I moved to Las Vegas, and there's, I've had some amazing cannabis and some amazing tasting products. But there's been a few where I got recommended, and they're like, "This is great. This is great for the amount of money you're going to spend." But it was crap weed. It was crap. Yeah, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Are dispensaries more or less trustworthy than your plug? That's right. an issue there. Let's let's not sidetrack to that. <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to sidetrack. I was trying to prove your point with your what to do with that product. No, no, no. But, with but the crap yeah. weed I got, on yeah. Top, on top of that, there are a lot of people who are rolling hemp and, and consuming hemp in, in 
smoking form and as kind of replacement for tobacco. And I've heard it, you know, many times that cannabis saved their tobacco addiction. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, I, I quit smoking cigarettes Your because of cannabis. Got, no, they told me they quit smoking cigarettes because of cannabis. And I'm like, oh, how so? Okay. I and mean, that makes like, sense. Well, and I'm like, how so? And they're like, I have one of these clients and, and him and his pals, they, they met, met me at the, at the MJ BizCon a few years back and they took a few samples and because they were trying to quit smoking, you know, tobacco, they wanted to try hemp cigarettes and they tried the hemp pre-rolls and they were awful. They, they were like, they can be horrible. Awful. Yeah, they can be really bad. So, so they rolled them in cannabis, and and it kind of said. Now I thought they had a store. By the way, I was under the impression that these guys, because they gave me their business kind of account number and whatnot, when they placed the order and they placed a, a wholesale order of you know, five hundred pages, five hundred leaves of paper from different. <laughs> And I was certain it's a store. And when, you know, at the follow up, I kind of realized, nope, that's for their own personal consumption because they replaced their wow. tobacco use with hemp and cannabis. See, now and I wish I did. Roll on. I, I, I quit smoking cigarettes back in like 2003. And if I'd have known about CBD hemp, that would have helped me quit so much faster and easier. And then adding your product to it, that's just a whole other level. You know, I, I never heard of it or thought of it before these guys, but you know, it, they, they got me thinking there's such a huge market that's untapped both in Europe and in and, and the States of the hemp, you know, pre-rolls and, and users and starting to approach this market. The feedback was so awesome. That's like, honestly, an untapped market that's waiting for us. And now with the, the you know, with the roll on, we can actually give true value for money because I, I don't I, I feel bad charging two bucks for a leaf when I can charge 15 bucks for 50 joints worth of you know terps in a right. roll on but, but like then, you said though those leaves are you can dose better with those so for people who are medical patients and want the same dosing every time those might be better for people like me but you know cost is cost it costs stuff to make stuff and if it's worth it it's worth it yeah it's it's it's, it's worth it it's just you know i felt bad even though you know i i'm selling premium product what can you do you know some people told me listen i buy your product once a year i buy a dozen pages and i smoke one a month for the you know the monthly highlight and, and and that's why I only buy once a year, but I still buy and that, that's like a third year purchase now just be, just before the holidays. And, and like, why just a dozen? And, and that was the response because we keep them as precious items for those special occasions. But now you and, don't have to. It warms, it warms my heart, just not my wallet. So now they get free roll-ons as, as, you know, kind of, of promotionals and let's see how to handle those awesome yeah so yeah you're you bringing the savings box. to the people yeah, well, yeah you got a special box coming your way casey Ooh. i'm waiting for your feedback i love to get feedback yeah you know, no, you'll get tons of feedback and, that i know it, it, it'll yeah, be but, it'll be public feedback hard, you know? people it'll be public feedback i'm always honest I, if, if there's anything, unfortunately, I'm always honest. Got this at MJ BizCon. It sucks. Hey, listen, rip it apart. I've, I've got so much bad feedback for this product in the first, you know, two years that it was out on top of very positive one, but I don't, I disregard the positive. It's the negative that kills you. But it's the negative that helps your product grow and so that you can learn as a company to make a better product too. Otherwise you wouldn't have all these other, otherwise you wouldn't be rolling out these other, pro, rolling out these other products. You see, 
So that's the reason we are there. We're listening to the negatives, not the positives. The positives are very, you know, fine for the ego. The negatives are really what pushes the work. Right. Well, and because you already know the positives, because you're a medical user too, and you you're a terpenes enthusiast, as you as you like to say. So you already know yeah. the positives yourself from usage. Yes, but you know, I am just one person with one perspective, and there are so many others with so many other perspectives around there. And I may be right for me and wrong for you. Let let's let's be very clear and, and empathetic about it and that it's a very personalized medicine and personalized experience this combination of human and plant this this magnificent unearthly godly you know joint impact of the entourage effect that we cannot understand or or begin to perceive why God made us this way that that we can interact with this plant on so many levels. But to those of you who don't, you know, who aren't believers or, or, or anything like that, try it out for yourself. Take the first hand experience and check it out. Now, if we have more time apart from cannabis that obviously people may enjoy cannabis on cannabis c-o-i-l or on uh is it weed.com i-s-i-t-w-e-e-d.com because when i came back to israel and smoked the weed in israel after it's been irradiated the thought of the smell was is it weed so that was the first name of the company uh, <laughs> and uh <laughs> so uh you can access it uh, and and just buy it and we'll ship it most of you know anywhere in the world apart from you know countries that that will not accept mail from israel in which case i'll ship it from bulgaria i will make sure you get your product um now uh, God bless coming you. back to <laughs> coming back to a point that is you know something to to to, to put off my chest on on the matter of terps and and the entourage effect and and what i discovered and and it is going to be discovered and and presented at a later stage in in much more of a scientific matter or or something but my research team who are amazing and are working are out of bulgaria the most of them and and have been with me for years have been mapping out the endocannabinoid system and the terps that are associated with the specific effects with the cannabinoids that are associated with the same specific effect. And all of this led us to the understanding that not only are there 31 effects that we can like look into and see how we can manipulate them and all of that, but it got us thinking into what is presented to the audience and to the public with regards to cannabis and why and, and, and how can we make it clearer because it took us so fucking long to understand the products and what's presented and the labeling and the relevance of what's on the labeling i mean come on it's like let's label it cannabis indica sativa and hybrid even though we know those terms have nothing to do with anything whatsoever for today i mean right we're, we're going to simplify the most beautiful complex plant into three little categories yeah it, or on the other hand let's complexify it and 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 bring you the entire you know uh and now chemical analysis and now you have to become an expert chemist to understand what the fuck you're going to consume and there's hardly any middle ground right. and 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 we're thinking like how can people really grasp i, I mean it's wait, so wait i can't i started taking notes of the cannabinoids and terpenes and it was like it got so overwhelming i stopped taking notes exactly it's so overwhelming 
And so we kind of need to figure out a way of marking these 31 effects that we found onto the labels and, and you know, like a, a ratio of zero to 10 based on client feedback or whatnot of what we should anticipate from this strain. So you have like fatigue, zero, energy, nine, uh, munchies, eight, um, I don't know, pain, uh, the, uh, pain decrease, eight, and then like eight, people yeah. like KC and me go like, oh yeah, give me one of those. I'll take a little eight and, of that and a six of that and a five of that. Exactly. And, and then you got this skinny girl that wants to go partying and she really doesn't want to have the munchies. She'll go like, hell no, none of that for me. I want this one. It will simplify everything. But how do we get to the point that we understand enough and validate enough of how it works so that we can actually attribute those specific effects to the strains and, and kind of put a volume of, you know, one to 10 or, or a scale of one to 10 on what of each of those impacts will impact you and, and how to take it forward. And that's where I'm at right now with this mind blowing thought. And, and, you know, if I could request for help from whoever is in within our listeners and audience, if you are a graphic designer that wants to participate in thinking on how to represent those 31 effects, if you are a chemist that wants to participate in the thought on how to represent those 31 effects, if you're just a cannabis lover that wants to be a part of the team, you know, approach us. Come, we're here, we're open. I'm, I'm, hey, well, well, rem remind I'm everyone I'm else then. Remind everyone else how to get a hold of you through Cannabis, what your social media is, and what the website is again then. Yeah, it's gill at isitweed.com brings me, you know, brings you directly to me. That's very simple. That's one way of communication. The other one is through Instagram at luxyging, L-U-X-Y-G-I-N-G. That's my personal account. Or at Cannabis Papers. That's our brand account. Uh, if you guys want to follow us on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on any other platform, just look Cannabis or Cannabis Papers. We're there and, you know, we're broadcasting. We're live. We're around. We're easy to find, or at least we will be soon. Uh, right now, our uh, main website was based on the assumption that IIWentourage.com would mean much more to us than to any other people because we really wanted to keep it stealth until we went public with the global brand uh, because that was, is it weed entourage? I W on, <laughs> as I told you the first name, but now it's cannabis and, and we got the, by the way, it's, tra it's trademarked uh, for us cannabis and uh, working hard to penetrate the market with force and, and to make sure that we get people to experience it firsthand and to give us feedback. That's so, the most important thing. Perfect. So get involved and you guys can check out Cannabis for yourself. I can't wait to try the products myself personally and give you some feedback and as well as record the unboxing and the using of it myself and how all of that works for everyone to see through down the road show. So stay tuned for uh, future videos from me on Cannabis products and how they affected and worked for me and all of my fucked up health and chronic pain. Much appreciated, and as you know, as, as far as I know that you will roast us, I am looking forward to it because that's going to be fun. Um, so everybody, I think this is uh, the end of our recorded session, or we can bring people to the stage for a q and I'm sure they do. Them. So for those of you who are watching this, this uh, is, uh, thanks for being here for another Cannabis Conversations with Casey and Gil. Thanks for being here, Gil. You're an amazing guest, uh, an amazing friend and brother. I love you so much. Uh, he, go ahead and 
pull out your phone and jump over to Clubhouse to continue the conversation with everybody live there. Gil, thanks for being a guest and uh, thanks for being here. We'll see you all down the road. Love you much, KC, and really a pleasure being a guest on your show anytime. What a pleasure. On Scott. my own topics or on 